so I hope you guys don't mind that, you know, I'm running out of contact lenses. <laughs> so there's just going to be a glare because I have to see myself in the screen in order to sit and talk into these videos, at least that I feel like I'm talking to my reflection. And so I thought tonight I would talk about, is it, import, is it important to look good? Self-image. For all of us self-promoting artists out there, now social media is a thing. If we have this ability to produce our own image, there's all these filters and Facetune, and there are so many more things, clothing options available to us now. And I am having a glass of rosé because I think it helps me talk better. Because it's a glass of rosé kind of night. Sometimes it's just that night. But the reason I thought I would talk about this is because so you're not able to quite look into my eyes. I'm not curating the light and the ambiance quite as well as I have in my past videos. And that is for a reason that's actually intentional. Because we're talking all about aesthetics in this video. <laughs> and more specifically, I guess, as a musician, you are your own product. You are not only presenting your music and your intellectual property, putting that forth on stage, but you're also offering yourself up to be somewhat objectified. And I have never tried to be sexy. I just have slowly over the years got more and more comfortable in this androgynous um, th this an androgynous vessel that I have, which I think is good for me. But on, honestly, when it comes right down to it, I think looking good is only as important as it is to you as an artist because, you know, there are lots of su su successful artists out there with a strong image and there are lots of successful artists with no strong image in particular. My idols happen to be artists like Stevie Nicks and Boy George and Madonna and those are those are really my I mean, and I could go on and on. Cindy Lauper is an, is another real strong person to me, um, but especially Stevie Nicks. And um, you know, they they would probably still have the same voice as they would and make the same music if they dress totally differently. But there's something about the whole fantasy, the full fantasy that is created when the sound and the image go together and create something even more. And 
I've had some time to think about this as I've had the past few years to explore my own personal image, which has mostly been for fun for me because honestly, I don't feel that it has pushed me that much further or held me back in any way as an artist. I, I think it just really is, it comes down to when you're talking about the medium of music, okay, um, it's a very sacred thing in that when I am on stage, I'm being totally transparent. I'm writing about my life and my experience. I am not putting on a persona to get up there and do what I do. That is because I have never really considered myself an entertainer, so to speak. I'm more of a songwriter than I am even a musician. I love to write and I love having the stage to communicate my writing to people, but I never have thought of myself as like David Cassidy <laughs> or Peter Frampton or, um, you know, these people who just have this aura about them and, and, and just really, I'm, I'm growing into that, I feel. I don't feel like it's ever too late for me. But as far as um, my image, my personal image goes, the only thing I've really been able to do with it is to really lean into my androgynous qualities, which I think are good qualities. I think it is good to be androgynous. I think it makes me stand out amongst the crowd. And I think that's a positive thing because I think of myself, I've started to think of myself more as a solo artist because the times I've tried to get together a band, I've not been that successful with. And I am open to having success with that as I continue to pursue this career in music. But um, I think what's most important is that you're comfortable in whatever costume you choose to put on, whether it's flannel and jeans and a t-shirt or whether it's a full-length maxi gown um, you know, whether it's sequins and rhinestone or cotton and greasy hair. <laughs> I, I think that uh, what I was, the point I was trying to get at before is to me, the stage is, it's just a totally open it's a totally open, honest thing. And people can tell if you're wearing the clothes or if they're wearing you. Um, and costumes are a lot of fun. It's really, really fun to do it up. Do it up style. And to... It's, you know, it is different from going to work in a factory or going to work in an office where there are limitations on those kind of environments on literally what the dress code is. But with stepping on stage, the way I look at it is the statement I'm making is I'm an artist and uh, I, I want to be art 
and wear art and um you know i i just have those people i look up to as, as a guide who i see myself in and it's not about copying people necessarily but some people are able to effortless effortlessly succeed without putting much thought into anything and some people have to be groomed within an inch of their fucking lives just to step out anywhere and I think it really is just a personal journey and the way I dress and the way I present myself comes with a lot of mythology and a lot of love for fairy tales and a, a, a desire to weave my own m mythology. I think of myself as a mythological character in real life. And I, 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 I've, I've come to think of myself this way over a long period of time of just being an artist. And that could change at any moment, you know, I, I could, um, I, I could totally change my image at any time and still continue to make the same quality of art, you know, but it's like, you know, I grew up in a, an interesting era where before there was m you know there was mtv but like uh, but before there was instagram and youtube and tiktok there all you had was like mtv and vh1 and so you had video directors and stylists and you had the artists themselves and there's usually a big team of people working together to create this package, hoping that it will sell and be successful. Britney Spears is an example of that. Madonna is definitely an example of that in a different way in that her presentation comes from her own ideas, which is why I look up to her as an artist, as well as Stevie Nicks. And... Um, Yeah, the, the 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 more time goes by, you know, of course age influences things too. But I think of myself as, uh, as living an artist's life and walking an artist's path. And so I allow myself a lot more fantasies and a, a, a lot more expression. W one of the things I love about performing live is like picking out what I want to wear <laughs> before I go on stage, you know, knowing that I'm going to have my moment to be on stage sort of in a spotlight before people it does have an influ that does have an influence on what I wear and my priority is to be comfortable because in order for me to perform well and to do a good job, I have to be comfortable. And I've really stopped wearing any kind of tight fitting button up zipper kind of clothing everything i wear is more flowy and elastic and kind of more hugs my body rather than constricts my body which i think 
allows me to be more comfortable and allows me to sing better and allows me, you know, like the other day, the, the other day I wore this, I, I've been wearing this hat, this ridiculous flamboyant red sequin hat, which I've, you know, I've stuck all kinds of antique pins and brooches to, which is beautiful. And I love the way it looks on me. But it's more of a, like, editorial photo shoot type of a piece than it is a stage piece because all the pins make it slip and slide around my head. And I had to break the elastic in it because... It was tight on my head and the, the sequins were digging into my forehead like teeth. So I said, fuck this. So I stuck my foot in the rim of the hat and I took my hand and just pulled on, I just pull, pulled the elastic until it snapped which caused a tear in the hat. And I, I, I repaired it back together with all, all these pins. And I was like, oh, I'm a genius. Somebody hire me as a stylist right now. And it solved the problem of it being too tight, but then now it's too loose and it's got this weird top, you know, it's, it's this weird, um, it's heavy on one side. So it's not actually comfortable to perform in. <laughs> but can certainly be part of a beautiful look on stage. You know, if I want to have one hand going like this. But then I need both hands to play my guitar and the piano. So, because I accompany it myself. Because I don't have a band. I don't have a music director or... Uh, even an accompanist, which I would like to have all of those things. But the point being is, I still gave a good performance, but I would have given a good, a gooder performance had I been more comfortable in that situation. So, um, the answer to the question is yes and no. That it matters, but it doesn't matter. It only matters um, to the degree that it matters to you as an individual. And I personally love to see what people who are performing, what they choose to wear, how they choose to present themselves, because it tells me, are they willing to kind of go the extra mile and, you know, put maybe some thought in, 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 into the art of what the, the image they're trying to create, or if not, then, you know, all the focus, of course, goes on the music, which is fine, too, because if the music is really good, you know, of course, you don't need all those frills and studs and rhinestones and buttons and everything that goes into that but it can be fun <laughs> and uh you know I'm gonna start to kind of pare down my wardrobe and downsize because I feel what's important for me is to simplify and I'm still going to wear a beautiful black velvet something basic, but I think for a while I am going to retire um, some of the gowns and other things I've been wearing just because, well, for a lot of reasons, but I just want things to be more simple. And that's kind of where my image is going now. And yeah, it is important to look good because people are shallow and people, 
well, I shouldn't say shallow, but the, the, the human brain is just, it's trained on judging based on how we look. It's just an automatic thing. I don't think it necessarily means that you're shallow. I do the very same thing. Before you ever open your mouth to sing on stage, what do people do first? They look at you like this. What does it look like? We don't know what it sounds like yet. What does it look like? Maybe they'll have that as a thumbnail. But yeah, it's fun to play with style and image. And it's, it's a fun way to get into the music as well, to get into the whole ritual of playing music. And I consider myself something of a witch in my spiritual life. And so I wear a lot of black and I wear a lot of like ceremonial robe type garments. And that's just me feeling my fantasy. And it doesn't matter to me if other people get it or connect with it because I know once I open my mouth and start to sing that I know I'm talented and I know I'm good. And that basically I can dress however I want and you know that my talent is going to shine. And, and I think that's what's important to me. Um, yeah, back in the days of, of MTV, you know, there, there were whole campaigns around bands, images, and MTV being a, a new thing in the 80s. And I saw all that go by. And then I saw the boy bands and the, and the girl groups, you know, and the, the auto-tune come in and the, the manufacturing of images and, and uh, everything develop. And it's all had an impact on me and how I think of, of myself as an artist. But what's most important, it really is to be comfortable at the end of the day, because if you're doing a two hour set and you're up there singing your heart out, you don't want shoes pinching your foot. You don't want a corset cutting off your circulation. Um, yeah, and so that's my thoughts on image, you know. And in this video, my lighting is not good. I'm scruffy, I'm scruffier than I've ever been in any of my videos. I've got like a full goatee. I don't care. I still got interesting things to say. And I still fucking love Stevie Nicks.